In this video, we're going to take a look at the settings for WordPress. And many of these settings set up the underlying platform for your entire site. So they're pretty important. We're here in the admin area, and on the left at the bottom is the settings subnav. If you simply click settings, it takes you right to the first one, which is general. Here we have the site title and tagline. Now these are the same things that we changed in the customizer. It's the exact same piece of information, so if you change it here and then go to the customizer, you'll see it different there. That means you don't have to set it here if you don't want to. You could go ahead and set it in the customizer if you wanted. Next is the WordPress address and the site address. If you're only running WordPress on your site, these two should be the same. If you have a site built with something else, and then WordPress is a subdirectory, like slash blog or something like that, then your WordPress address would have slash blog on it, but the site address would be the top-level domain. If you change these to something that isn't a real web address, your site will immediately become inaccessible. The only way to fix it is to actually log into your database directly, find the address in the database, and change it back. So please be very, very careful with this. Generally speaking, you would only ever want to change it if you were moving from one domain to another, and the other one was actually already working. Another possible reason to change it is if you get SSL, and you simply put an S right here. If you do that, WordPress will immediately log you out, because you're accessing a whole new site. But then you can just log right back in and pick up where you left off. Next is an email address. This is for the site administrator. This gets used for a variety of things, notably when new users sign up, but often if you have a contact form, when someone fills it out, this address is the default one for the form to get sent to. Next we look at membership. I have anyone can register turned off, which means not anyone can register. But it's not uncommon for people to turn this on and leave the default role at subscriber. I really recommend you not use any of the others for open subscription. I can see a scenario where you might create a new role with limited specific access to things. But generally, I would recommend you leave this off. Now for Wordville, we might want to leave it on because we're a city and we want our citizens to be able to create an account and log in and leave comments and things like that. But again, they should be subscribers. Next we choose a time zone, and this is important. Something you can do with blog posts is future date them. And then when the date passes, they auto-publish. However, if your time zone here is set to something like UTC, and you set the publish date relative to your own time zone, you're going to be very surprised when it publishes at the wrong time. So make sure you set your time zone to something relative to the content to your site. I'm just going to put ours in the middle of the country and choose Chicago. Then we have date and time format. And this is simply how dates are printed on the front of your site. They don't really impact when things publish or anything like that. So this is personal preference. What day of the week the week starts. I like Sunday. And then site language. As you can see, WordPress is translated into a wide variety of languages. We're going to keep English for this one. And now I'll save changes. Next, let's take a look at writing. When we went over categories, I mentioned that every post must be in at least one category. By default, it's uncategorized, but you could set up something else. If you don't like the word uncategorized, you could create a category called general, and in here, set that to be the default. The same goes for post format. By default, it's standard. But if you choose to set up a site that is primarily photography, you could make it image, and then have to change it to standard if you wanted to do a post. Here we have the option to post via email. And the way this works is you create an email account. And then when you want to post, you just send an email to that account. 
And then right here are the login settings for that account so that WordPress can log into that email account, check for new mail if there is one, it grabs the contents and makes a post. This allows someone to post to their blog via email. There are many plugins to enhance this to make it work even better, more smoothly, and handle more things in your email. If you're going to be posting via email, I recommend you look at some of the plugins and see what's available there. And here we have update services. Let's take a look at those. By default, when you do a blog post, WordPress sends a message to all of these sites to let them know that you did that. Then all of these sites spread the word. That helps get your message out. Right now, we can't do that because of our site's visibility settings. And we'll get to the visibility setting in just a few minutes. Next, let's look at reading. Here we have front page displays, and we've covered this in the customizer as well. Our home page displays home, and the posts is news. Right now, the news page shows at most 10 posts at a time. If you have more than 10, then it makes a next button. You can set this to anything you want. If your posts are very short or you only show excerpts, you might want to increase this to 20 or something so that your page gets a little longer. Or if your posts are full length on your archive page, you might want to make this just two or three because your posts could get long. Syndication feeds show the most recent 10 items also. Syndication feeds are RSS, and they're a way for other sites to see your content as it gets published. We'll take a look at that in another episode. For each article in a feed, show the full text or the summary. And this, again, is related to your syndication feeds. And here we have search engine visibility. Remember the bit about not being able to publish to those other sites? That's because right now, I'm telling Google and other search engines, do not index this site. I'm not public yet. Please go away. Now, it says it's up to search engines to honor this request. Google always honors this request. But there are some less reputable search engines that don't, and they will go through your stuff, and they will tell people about it. But by and large, this works pretty well to keep important search engines from crawling your site. In our next video, we'll take a look at the rest of the settings in this area.